the High Tech Nomad here, and today I'm going to share with you my top 10 tips for users that have the Samsung Gear S3 Frontier watch. Number 11, kind of a bonus one, and that is a Twistoflex band. I cannot stress enough that, and it seems rather small, however, being able to just take the watch and put it on and go is, uh, is, a, is as you start to use the watch more and more, you're going to find that this is very super helpful. Just be able to put it on, take it off, boom, you don't have to mess with it. Uh, if you have a separate charger, a second charger in the car, knowing that you can just take it off, throw it in the stand in the charger, get where you want, put it on, you're all set instead of trying to do all this. So I have a couple of different bands, but this by far is my favorite, and I've been wearing my watch a lot more with this. I actually got made sure that it was um, adjusted so that it was snug enough, so that the heartbeat monitor works fine, the steps uh, counter works fine, it doesn't come off or slip or slide. So, and it, and it doesn't pinch. It's not like it's pinching or anything like that. So, uh, bonus one, number 11, is a Twisto Flex Band. Number 10, Samsung Pay. I can't stress enough how much more I've been using Samsung's, Samsung Pay now that I'm, I have it on my Gear S3. I've had it on my phone for a while. I try to use it as often as I could. However, being able to just push the button, and tap and pay has, uh, I've probably used it 30 times this month, and I think last month with my phone I used it like five. So this is much easier to just tap and pay. And again, it works both on NFC and on the magnetic strip. So you're really going to be able to use it in j just about everywhere. Number nine, real email deletion. Now, on my previous gear watch, I would get notifications about emails, and when I would delete the notification, the email, because it was just a notification, the email would actually still stay on the phone. However, with the Gear S3, I'm actually able, when I actually, when I delete a email, it stays deleted, so to speak. Let's uh, see if I can go through here now, see if I can do this real quick. Okay, so I have a couple of different... Let's actually go into the emails. Let's come back. Hit the button. Bada boom, bada bing, bada boop. So here we have a change.org. I'm going to just select that one. I'm going to delete it. And as you can see, it's gone from the watch. So that was, which was kind of a surprise for me the first time because I thought there were notifications. And I did a, um, uh, I did a d delete all. And uh, needless to say, when I picked up my phone, I was like, holy moly. But it actually is a lot better because what's happening is, is uh, I do find when I have the spare minute or two, I'm going through my messages this way, and I'm able to obviously delete them, and they delete off my phone. So when I finally pick up my phone, I don't have 62 messages. So that's a, a big thing. Same thing with your messages. If you delete it there, it's going to delete on your phone. So again, pretty cool. You don't have to pull your phone out every time to actually delete a message. Number eight is an app called White Light. You can find that in the Galaxy Play Store. And all it does is make a white face on your watch, which seems silly until you're wandering around at 2 o'clock in the morning trying to get something done in the bedroom. Uh, then all of a sudden this thing is incredibly super bright and it's extremely useful. I'm actually surprised how often I use this. Um, like I said, uh, I'm out late at night. I come in, I'm trying to get a couple of things done. You know, in the bedroom, I don't want to turn on the, the light and wake everybody up. Uh, I put this on this, and it's enough light that you can just see enough to get something done. So I strongly suggest putting this app on your watch. Number seven is double tap access. Now, what double tap access means is that you can program the home button to do a couple of different things when you, or a number of different things, when you double press it. So when I double press it, I have the ability to have it bring something up. Let's just take a, a quick look here. Basically, you can have it do recent apps, or you can have it run just about any app that you have on your watch. So you can double tap and have it bring up an email, a phone, a uh, glimpse, even the white light that we just took a look at. So I find this very, very helpful. Um, I don't use the S-Voice 
all that often as far as to initiate something. So the fact that I could have the double tap, turn on the white light, or have the double tap, pull up Uber, or have the double tap, pull up one of the other programs, um, or even the phone, that's a, a big, a big, that's a biggie. So that now when I have the phone and I say, okay, fine, I want to do something, click, click, and that will bring up whatever app I've told it to bring up. Number six is media controller versus media app. And this one took me a little while before I realized exactly what was going on, and it's actually kind of cool. So when you're in the, the, the app on your watch, oh, sorry. So when you're on the app on your watch and you see the little watch icon, what it's really doing is playing any of the tracks that you actually have on your watch. Okay? So if I play, uh, let's just see whatever was here. I think there's a couple of test app, test tracks, okay, so, okay, and I can change and lower the volume, I can move to first track, last track, okay, if I click on the watch, then it says music source change to phone, and now what it's doing is it will play the playlist or whatever app I've had loaded on the phone, so it's really not, it's, it's, so I, obviously I'm playing what's on my phone there, so now when I switch tracks, going to the next track in my playlist and this is helpful because this is helpful because I'm using a little speaker here right now but I would normally have my earpiece in which is playing my music and if I have it on the phone whatever I've chosen on the phone is going to come through the earpiece however uh, if I click on the gear then whatever I have there will come through the speaker so it's not just a it's like the old Media, you had you had two different apps on the old gear. You had a media player and a media controller, and the media player played the media that was on your watch, and the media controller controlled the media that was on your uh, phone. But now it is combined into one app, and it simply knows which one to do based upon whether it sees the. See now, music source changed to gear. Now it's going to play whatever's on here, and again. And it took me a while because I kept clicking on that. I thought it was just changing the output of the of the audio, and it's not. And again, what happens is, is I can hook this up to the watch because most of your Bluetooth items will allow you to have two sources. So if I go ahead and hook this up to the thing and that up to the thing, I can actually very easily switch uh, switch between the two. Okay, this next one is what I would call intelligent text messaging. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the watch back on because when the watch is off and you do a couple of different things it can sense that it's not on and so it keeps asking you for your passcode but once I put it in and I leave the watch on for the most part I can get away with a lot of things before I have to put the passcode back in again so on my other phone I've typed in how are you and now I'm gonna just kinda of go over so I typed in how are you that was a message I sent myself and um, I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna go to reply and what you're going to see is these ones in white, those are my quick responses that I put in already. Okay, yes, no, <clears throat> on the other line, meeting you, yes, okay. In the blue are ones that it, it dynamically scans your message and tries to figure it out. So see what it says? I'm fine and you, not good. Okay. And it took me a while to realize it's dynamically doing those. So now I'll type in another message. Are you going to the store? And again, it's not with all of them, but it's kind of picking different ones out and trying to decide, uh, you know, things like, are you fine? How are you? What's going on? Uh, that kind of thing. Okay, so now it says I got a new text messages. And it says, see, now I have... I typed in, are you going to the store? And see, I have, yes, I'm going. No, I am not going. So that's really, really cool in my opinion that it's sort of using a little bit of artificial intelligence and giving me some answers so I don't have to just use my yes, no uh, on the other line. And uh, it seemed pretty good on a lot of the things because a lot of times it was things, are you going to the store? Are you on your way? Uh, are you going to be delayed? That sort of thing. And this is going to give me a couple of quick choices that I can just, boom, hit on that, and it will send that back, and I'm all set, rather than just, like I said, just yes, no, maybe so. Okay, this next one is actually two programs. It's a Tasker program and an IFTTT. Now, a Tasker, 
I could spend all day on this. I'm not going to. I have a couple of different apps. Uh, sorry, a couple of different videos on Tasker. Tasker is basically where you can write little mini programs that are on your phone, and they can get really involved. So you can have it when when you start it, you do this and you do that, and they're really really involved. But now you can actually uh, start them up from your watch. So that brings another whole dynamic in it. So after I have them, uh, I have a very simple one here, which is to say hello. So it says when I key this in, just say hello. I just did this for demonstration purposes, but I can just go in. And you can see it ran the app. I have the sound down. Uh, it, go, it went ahead and it ran the app and it said hello. So you can actually set up a very complex uh, a t set of tasks and then just key them from your watch. Now the only disadvantage of this is that your watch must be talking to your phone which makes sense for most of you because you're saying okay I have that but again remember if you have the frontier then you may have just your watch and not your phone so this will not work remotely. That's where the second one comes in and that is IFTTT and IFTTT is a set of um, that's a website that you can go to and you can set up tasks via that website and now you can key them in off of this let me just see if I can find it it's on my watch here somewhere I got a ton of apps on my watch um, you can key them off of this and again the co cool thing about this is is that the IFTTTs come via the internet so you do not have to be connected to your phone uh, to run those so it's uh, I'll put the link down in the in the description so it's called triggers and what triggers will do is uh, triggers uh, it's actually just sent off uh, an event to IFTTT and I can have it do anything that IFTTT can do and as I said I don't actually have to be they don't have to both be connected now IFTTT uh, so there it goes it, w it went ahead and ran the app so I could say when I push this button unlock the front door when I push this button turn off the lights when I push this button uh, log me in here or whatever so there's a whole bunch of things you can do if you have questions about that let me know but again the important thing to know is is that you can run tasker apps uh, when you're connected to your phone and you can run IFTTT without them if you um, without your phone now this next one is an app uh, called Watchmaster that offers you two different things. They offer you a bunch of different watches. Again, because when you have a cool watch like this, you want to have some cool watch faces, all right? And what happens is, is that they have a bunch of free ones, and then they have a number of different watch faces uh, for $199, $299, $244, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but they have a subscription, and it's funny. I, I actually I have the subscription. I'm trying to find out what it is. It's not that much. It might be five bucks. Might be ten bucks. I have the. Let's just even see if I even have it here somewhere. It wasn't that much. It was like five bucks or ten bucks. But that's for the year. And then what you can do is use any of the watch faces that are within the application, and that's huge because I had probably spent uh, fifteen or twenty bucks separately on watch faces, and in fact, a lot of the watch faces that are in here are being sold separately outside of here for again two, here's one for 250 199 199 so you, obviously uh, so now I have access to let's just take a look and see uh, I believe it's 250 to right now as of today there's 266 designs that I can pick from so I found it was it's like look hey dude just do the just do the subscription and be done with it and have all of the uh, have all of the different pieces okay so what's really cool about this is that when you pick a, a watch face you can actually see what it's going to look like it's and it, it's it actually changes to the correct time and gives you a, a good idea as to what it's going to look like and then you can actually just hit apply and go through there so I've picked my favorites and I could just switch through them by simply but I like this one here this one um, gives me both the date, the 11th, it gives me the phone percentage, which is 84%, and it's giving me my watch percentage, which is, in uh, this case, 94%. Now, again, if I don't have the watch on, you will constantly be prompted, because it knows it's not on your wrist, you're going to constantly be uh, prompted to... Um, 
put in your passport. Well, let's just take a couple look at some other ones here. So again, you just go ahead, click one. There's another cool one. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's just do one more. And I had found, so I've probably found about 15 or 20 that I like. So again, the price of the subscription um, more than pays for that. And again, that that curbs it because it's it's funny once you start looking at watch faces and you keep saying, oh, that's the perfect watch face. And then you see the next one, you go, oh, no, that's the perfect one. And then, so now I don't have to worry about that, and I don't have to feel guilty about constantly buying watch faces. I've got a subscription now, and I have 266 to choose from, so there's no issue with, um, uh, I can find, um, I'm hoping they'll get the 365, and I can try one uh, for every day of the year. Here's another new one that I hadn't done. And, uh, they're very, uh, they're they're very good. A lot of the designs are really really cool designs. So here I hit a preview. It's downloading it from their system. Uh, I now see the little uh, preview of it here, and then I just hit apply, and we'll see it say zero to a hundred, and bada boom, bada bing, bada boop. There we go. And they're really, really good designs. They've put some extra shadowing and things in there, so it actually looks like a real watch face. This next one is a procedural thing, and it has to do with call forwarding. Now, most people are familiar with star 72 and star 73. So star 72 says, forward all my calls to this number. And star 73 says, stop forwarding calls. Well, what a lot of people don't realize is there's a star 71, and I'll tell you what the difference is. So star 72 says, uh, if your number is 617-555-1212, I hit star 72, I say 617-555-1515, all the calls will go to there. So they'll, they won't even ring on here, they'll go from here right to there. However, if you do star 71, what it'll do is if I don't answer on the phone, or I'm busy or whatever, then it will ring on the watch. And while this sounds um, bad, it's actually good. So here's what happens. When these two are together and they're connected by Bluetooth and a call comes in, so let's say I'm going to do a star 71, so I'm going to star 71 to the watch. So what that means is, is when these two are connected via Bluetooth, a call comes in and I don't, they'll both ring at the same time and I can reject the call. Now, when I move away from my phone, when somebody calls me the first few times, it's going to ring on the phone two, three, four times then it's going to ring on the watch. So if they're apart, it automatically will forward them to my watch. And this has been really good. Now, a lot of times people were saying, oh, well, just do star, star 72. You can turn that on and off. Mm, problem. And I'll tell you what the problem is. I've actually had a couple of times where the phone dies before I have a chance to do star 72. So I run out of battery power. So now I have this really cool watch that can make and receive calls but it doesn't know to send the calls there. So now I've just turned on star 71 and I've left it on. Why not? It's gonna ring on my phone and if the watch is with me, they're both gonna ring at the same time. However, if the phone dies or I'm not with me, it's gonna try and reach this. As soon as it realizes it can't reach this, it's gonna go ahead and uh, ring on my watch or again, if my phone is plugged in, like I left it plugged in the car the other day, it'll ring three times there, and then it'll start ringing three times over here. So that's a good feature. Just use the star 71 and be done with it, and you don't have to worry about anything else. And my number one app is Camera Remote. And Camera Remote does as you might uh, suspect. It's going to remotely allow me to access the camera, and it does some really cool things. So the first thing that you'll notice is, it is now showing me a preview of my camera on my watch, but it still has the home screen on on the phone. So that also means that you could use it as a kind of like a little mini spy camera. So if I were to set this up and then leave it there, as you can see, it just has the home screen on it, but I would be able to see what's going on through the camera. As you can see, there's my hand there. So I'll be able to see what's going on through the camera, even though uh, to everyone else it's going to go ahead and do that. And what I'm allowed to do, or what I can do, I'm just going to just set this up over here for a second, okay? So what I can do is I can, um, it's, it's got a ton of features. I can zoom in, let's go back, sorry. I can zoom in, I can zoom out, I can choose uh, a ton of different features from the, from the camera, just about everything you normally would be able to do. I can select to turn the uh, turn the flash on, turn the flash off, I can change the resolution, I can add a timer, uh, I can 
do video. I mean, it's just, it's, this is like a real, I think it's like two bucks. It's a really, really good app. I can switch between the front facing camera and the rear facing camera very, very easily. When I take my picture, it goes ahead and allows me to even share it right from here. So I can actually uh, go ahead, take a picture. As you can see it's taking the picture now for me. It gives a little thing. I can click on it. I can actually see the image. I could rotate it if I wanted to. I can come here. I can uh, open it up on my phone, which I've just done. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, I can delete it. I can send it. I can share it. I can go ahead and say, okay. So this gives you a way to actually have a picture, take a picture really quick with your phone, and then share it uh, with all of your different apps. Now, one of the things I've been using it for is um, I do have a tripod, but now I can actually... I was able to, uh, I was at an event the other day, I set up the tripod, we all stood in front of it, and then I used the phone to take the picture. And I knew exactly how the shot was going to look. So some of the other apps that they have out there, you can't really see it, it's not in real time, it's, a, it's a very, very laggy. This is a really good app, and like I said, you can even set your phone up somewhere, like a little spy camera, and then use this to, to take, the other day I was uh, in, so I have my phone in my car and I have it on the on the dashboard and what happened was as I stepped out of the car I was in a place but I wasn't too far away from it and I was able to activate the camera and take a picture of the car in front of me because I thought they were going to back into me I was actually able to take a picture of the car in front of me even though I wasn't in the car I was actually able to start a video because I thought they were going to bang into me I started a video from my watch I wasn't even in the car so that is just a really good and in fact actually when I took this uh, th uh, this picture I used a tripod, but on another picture I handed somebody the phone and it was kind of funny because I just said, here, just, just point this towards me. And of course, for them, all they were seeing was the home screen, so they had no idea. I said, look, just, just do me a favor, just stand there and hold that. And they were like, okay. And they stood there and hold it, held it, and I went into the app. Uh, I got it all, I got the shot all lined up, and I took my picture. Bada boom, bada bing, bitty boop. There we go, taking it again. And the person I uh, took the phone right out of their hand. So. And there you have it. Those are my top 10. Please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. I'm going to try and do more and more of these. I've got a couple other uh, cool things that I'm working on. So you want to make sure you get those. So please hit the like button. And this is the High Tech Nomad signing out.